This is Nikolai Lenin, and Lenin's all on one side, but it's it's the um, bucket because the Uranus stands out on its own here. It could it could be the Saturn is the bucket, or the Uranus is the handle of the bucket. But the one that's the furthest away is the one that ends up getting the handle. So this is Lenin is the bucket. So I haven't been interpreting that much, just giving little ideas. But I wanted to get used to looking at charts, seeing the patterns, seeing that they're there, and if you go over any of them and you read the thing and you think about it a bit, it expands deeply. Um, this is Harry Houdini's horoscope and um, 60, 60, 60, that's no, not quite 90, less than a square. So this would be, it's on the borderline, it's almost display type, but it's it's probably a borderline, it looks like the seesaw with two to, two to eight, but it's almost a splash being all around, but I would put it into the seesaw with a two on the Leo and Virgo and all the other eight on the other side. Alistair Crowley, um, occultist and magician, very, wrote a lot of books, seesaw, both ways. And he's born sun in Libra, draw the line across, the moon's on the counterclockwise half, so the moon's waxing, it's almost at the full moon, a, a couple, a day and a half before the full moon. Edgar Casey, psychic, one planet, Uranus, the planet of excitement and unconventional ways, balancing all the other planets. And his face, he's born just before he's Pisces. He's born, his moon is in Taurus, so he's just born about three or four days after the after the new moon. So it's a waxing moon. Herman Hess, great writer, Cancer, Pisces moon, but again, it's this. It's the bundle, his focus was on understanding Jupiter. So in his writing, there was a certain depth of understanding that was always fascinating in his writing. This is Leon Trotsky, again, distinct seesaw. Only this is five against five. Stalin, uh, it ends up being a seesaw two against eight. Alice Bailey, another occultist, she had, she has the bowl, the bowl, the bowl chart all half on one side gets all her energy together, wants to pour it out to the other side. Picasso, well, Picasso would have to be a seesaw again. Five against five. So I, when I found astrology, I was so absorbed and so inspired. I spent, you know, I just for a couple of years, I just did nothing else. I just drew the, I saw the color. I drew these charts out. I had to see everything I could possibly see. It's kind of, I would like to say I was kind of a madman then, but some people would argue it's probably still true. So anyways, his, um, no. No, so it's a seesaw chart. This is Keller Gibran, Capricorn. This moon is in Sag. It's just on the count on the clockwise side, so this moon's just catching up. It's on the waning, the waning moon. Mussolini. This is a bundle chart. All the energy going to Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. All the this it happened. A lot of people were like. This is 83. This ha happened when he was born. It also was happening at the time during the war during the Second World War that uh, the same energy and similar signs was causing those problems too. Hitler, seesaw. Two, two up in the top and the other eight below. Aries, Capricorn moon. Haley Selassie, uh, Ruler of Ethiopia. I like this chart. He called himself the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. He would always travel with two lions. Even if he took a boat, he'd have his two lions with him. And he was the Leo with a cat with an Aquarius moon. And so you can really almost see, and his son was conjunct Mars. So you can almost, he called himself the King of Kings. And <laughs> his chart kind of reinforms it very poetically how he would be driven to politics. Mao Zedong, it's it's three against seven, so it's the seesaw type. 
He's the Capricorn with the Leo moon. With the Capricorn, Leo moon's on the counterclockwise side, so the moon is catching up on this. That's the waning moon from Leo. But Capricorn, Leo moon is very another Napoleon Bonaparte had that. This person is driven to live up to their political destiny, even though it may ruin them. Huddles Huxley, this is not a seesaw. It's all the planets are on one side. It's only the Mars. You'd think Uranus or Mars, but I think Mars is just out a little bit further. So Mars would be the handle of his, bu of his bucket. This is Velikovsky. And Velikovsky, it's, it, you'd say seesaw radio, but it's not. Because there's, not, there's all the planets on one side and the moon over on the other. So this is another bucket chart to express the moon. But the moon is in Aquarius, so he didn't express the feeling. He expressed his ideas. He was really knowledgeable. And, and um, he even made some predictions that they would be, they would find radio waves coming from Jupiter itself. And Einstein said there wouldn't have been. And But it, just after he died, this was published just after he died, Einstein realized it was and, and gave acknowledgments that he was correct. Buckminster Fuller, he's got the bull, the bucket chart with the moon as the handle. And I like this one because he's the cancer of the moon in Pisces, but he built all the alternative home things. He built the domes, he, how to survive, how to live. He had a very, um, his socially conscious, how to how people could be in different places. So I thought the moon being at the handle, and he built all these domes and places that was a really um, special affirmation. Marcus Garvey, um, black politician. This is Morris Escher. I don't know if you've ever seen Escher's artworks. He does pictures of hands drawing themselves, or he'll do, have all these mirror type image things. And he had his sun and moon in Gemini with Neptune, Mercury. So a very interesting chart. But it, this would be Saturn to the moon. So it looks like seesaw. No, it's a, it's, it's a, buck, it's a bucket with the handle being Mars. And C.S. Lewis, another writer, Sag, his is all on one side. So his is going to be the bull. See, it's a little more than one side, but it's within the opposition. So if it's within the opposition, you can keep it. Say, this is George Orwell, 1984, two planets against eight. He has the seesaw type. Aquarius, Scorpio moon. It's coming back to the sun. So it's waning. Over a few minutes over, almost finished. Dr. Zeus to, um, is a, could be a seesaw, but it's actually the locomotive. And it's actually the bucket with the handle being the moon and writing all the, all the kids' stories and the strange stories. Okay, Salvador, Dal Salvador Dali. It's a bull, half one way, having to get his information out the other. Alan Watts. Um, Alan Watts would be a seesaw. He's a, a Zen writer. Arthur C. Clarke, 2001 writer, seesaw. His, his sun's there, but it's in size, but his moon has just is moving counterclockwise from it, so it's a waxing moon. Just at the in the first phase. This is Isaac Asimov, another science fiction writer, and this would have to be considered a, a, a splash chart because there's only one empty area and it's not big enough to be a trine, so it would, it would fall into the splash category. Ray Bradbury, um, Mars Chronicles, he wrote, uh, so he had the Uranus as the handle. Ryan Aldous. These are just different sci-fi writers. Again, more, it's a, a bucket with Uranus as the handle. Allen Ginsberg, beatnik poet. This is a it's a bucket with Saturn as the handle. So once you see the pattern type, then you can see he works this pattern type, and then you see which sign is coming into effect the pattern, and it really opens up a way. This is Stanley Kubrick, 2001 Clockwork Orange. He has the seesaw chart.
two against eight. Martin Luther King is this locomotion. Something some has everything together, but something has to be fixed. There's something missing. You know, there's something to be done, something to be fixed, something to work towards. Neptune was his handle. No, Saturn was his handle. So he worked hard for it and made it a little more political. This is Yoko Ono, Aquarius, she seesaw. And that's the end of the color charts. Okay, so this is pretty much the end of what we're going to do today.